Okay. Let's discuss a problem from electronics section. So this problem is basically from FET section. The problem reads an N channel FET having gate source switch off voltage VGS off equals to minus 2 volt is used to invert a 0 to 5 volt square wave signal as shown. The maximum allowed value of R would be in kilo ohm up to 2 decimal. So look this is the circuit we are given so this is basically fit now as you know fit is consisting of gate source and drain okay so this is the gate part so we are adding g this is source and this is drain okay. and current id is flowing through this resistance so that is id now if we expect this signal to be inverted at the output then what we can expect that if VGS of equals to minus 2 volt then if you want to calculate ID then ID will be equals to 5 minus G out by this resistance what is the value of that resistance it is given to be 5 kilo ohm This signal is to be inverted. So when it is 0, it will give you 5 and when it is 5, it will give you 0. So let's consider we are at 5. So it should give 0 at the output. So B output equals to 0. So 5 minus 0 by 5 means 1. 1 or not will be the unit? 1 milliampere because kilo ohm is there. So we have got ID. Now what we will do, we will try to calculate the voltage at this point A. So we are naming this point, gate point as A. Now we have to calculate the voltage at that point A. Now to calculate the potential at that point A, we are using superposition principle. So using superposition principle. So I have already made a video about this principle, superposition principle. I told you that this principle is very useful for solving problems from electronic section. If you have not watched it, you can go to the playlist electronics uh, electronics of this channel, you will get it. There you will get the video on KCL, KVL and this superposition principle. You check it out and come back to this problem, you will understand. So in superposition principle, what we do, if we have multiple uh, sources, then we keep one source at a time and, uh, and you get other source to zero. Okay, so here you can see there are two sources V in and minus 12 volt, 12 volt. Now to calculate the potential of this point, we'll just one <coughs> once we'll make this potential to be zero, another time we will make this potential to be zero. So first what we are doing, so and doing that the net potential at this point V A will be the sum of them. So firstly what we are doing, we are equating this minus 12 volt to zero. Then what is the <coughs> potential? V in by R plus 1 and we are calculating against this so into 1 okay and the next case we are equating this term to be 0 and a plus sign will appear but here it is minus 12 so minus 12 by R plus 1 and we are taking the voltage drop across this resistance R so it is R okay so this is equal to V in minus 12R by R plus 1. Okay. Now, if somehow we get to know the value of VA, then we can easily say the maximum allowed value of R. Now, how can you get to know the value of VA? So, to do that, we are uh, using this thing. So, VA minus VGS. So, VA minus VGS means VA this is the potential at this point and VGS will get to source this potential will be subtract subtracted from this VA potential and the remaining potential will appear in this resistance of 100 ohm okay now if you know the current or uh, through this resistance then we can know the corresponding voltage drop now we have already calculated ID so same ID will flow through this resistance so 100 into ID so that is the voltage drop okay now id value of id equal to 1 million ampere so it is basically 10 to the power minus 3 means 10 to the power minus 1 means 1 by 10 okay now 
vg is, is given to be minus 2 volts it's become plus 2 volt so on the other side it becomes minus 2 volt so you go to minus 19 by 10 means minus 1.9 volt so v a equals to minus we'll just equate it to this expression so v a equals to we have got minus 1.9 volt so we are just putting the value here minus 1.9 Therefore, what, uh, what can we get from here? And V in, in the place of V in, we will write uh, 5 because V in is 5 volt. So, 5 minus 12 R by R plus 1 equals to minus 1.9. Therefore, 5 minus 12 R equals to minus 1.9 R minus 1.9. Therefore, it will produce 10.1 R equals to 6.9. Yes? Yes. Therefore, R equals to 6.9 by 10.1 and it is produced, it will produce 0.68 approximately. Yes, 0.68. Now, as you can see, it here R plus 1 and 1 was in kilo ohm. So, R must be in kilo ohm. So, 0.68 kilo ohm. So, this is the required maximum allowed value of R which will allow this circuit to invert this signal from this to this. Uh, before going for the question, uh, let us let me discuss something about classical region and quantum region. So, for the time being, let us consider a gas container which is consisting of different size of gas molecules or same size of gas molecules, some ideal gas we are considering here. So, we are writing, we are showing some gas particle like this. So, this is the gas particle. Okay. Now, from de Broglie hypothesis, we know that every material particle will have its corresponding wave. Okay, so this suppose this is the corresponding wave of this material particle, and we are considering another particle which is situated uh, beside this particle. So this is a gas particle, and it will also have its corresponding thermal uh, wavelength or wave wave in nature. Now, let's say the distance between these two atoms is R naught. So, this is the interatomic spacing between these two atoms. Now, we can say the gas is in the classical regime only when this R naught is much much greater than lambda t. What is lambda t? Lambda t is the corresponding thermal wavelength of these particles. Now, we know that R naught is proportional to 1 by n to the power 1 by 3, where n is the number density. Okay, so, when we get, will get this type of case, we can say that the gas molecules are in classical regime. Okay. Now, when we move towards the quantum regime, then what happens? The wave function of the different particles starts overlapping to each other. And what is the corresponding condition in these terms? When the quantum effect starts dominating, then the corresponding formula or relation becomes n lambda t cubes approximately proportional to 1. Okay. Now, if so, this is the case when quantum effects predominates. So, we get quantum effect. Now, if you want to plot it, what we can plot T versus n. We can plot T versus n temperature versus number density and you will get a curve like this and this region where n into lambda t cube is much much less than 1. This is the classical region and this will be the quantum region. So, this concept will be utilized to solve the next problem. Okay, now <coughs> let us solve the problem. The problem reads the quantum effects in an ideal gas become important below a certain temperature TQ when de Broglie wavelength corresponding to the root mean square thermal speed becomes equal to the interatomic separation. For such a gas of atoms of mass 2 into 10 to the power minus 6 kilogram and number density 6.4 into 10 to the power 25 uh, meter per meter cube, TQ is 
equals to dash in between the minus 3 Kelvin up to up to one decimal place we have to find out the answer. Now using the condition of quantum effect we know that n into lambda t q is approximately equals to 1 ok. Therefore lambda t square is approximately equals to n to the power 2 by 3. Why we have calculated this lambda t square it will be revealed. Now we know that lambda t means thermal wavelength equal to h by root of r twice pi m k b into t q. We have to calculate this t q. Therefore, t q equals to h square by 2 pi m k b lambda t square. Fine. Now everything is given. So we know say it's 6.6 into 10 to the power minus 34 the second square divided by 2 into pi minus 3.14 mass is given to be 2 into 10 to the minus 26 kg. So 2 into 10 to the power minus 26. Then what else? Kb Kb is 1.38 into 10 to the minus 23 joule per Kelvin. And lambda t square, lambda t square equal to 1 by into the power 2 by 3. So it will come up. So n value of n is also given 6.4 into 10 to the power 25. Okay, to the power 2 by 3. Now if you calculate, if you calculate using a calculator, then you will get 0 0.04021 means 40. 0.21 into 10 to the power 3 um, Kelvin. Okay, sorry, should be minus 40.21 into 10 to the minus 3 Kelvin. So up to one decimal, it will be 40. Point, up to one decimal, 40.2. So 40.2 into 10 to the minus 3 Kelvin. So this is the answer. So this is all for today, guys. Hope you will like the video. If you find this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are a new visitor of this channel, please subscribe the channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Okay, and if you want if you want different types of videos, you can check our playlist section. There I have divided the videos into different playlists so that you can easily select and uh, watch videos as per your choice. And finally, what I said, thanks for watching.